During the residency, artists shared their quill work techniques, and they also learned and developed new ones. Some of these techniques are presented here. Okay, so you soak the quills until they get squishy, and warm water gets them softer a lot faster than cold, but cold water works if you let them sit there long enough. Which um, side do you use the it on? Tip. Do you use it on the rough side or the flat? Like this side or the other side? No, perfect. And I just lay the quill down and run the back of my thumbnail over it. Some people use you know, the back of their scissors or other items, and then you can pick it up and just crease it with your fingernail. Do we have to do it that way? Flat, like, like paper, if you crease paper. We leave the black tip on. This, that's used to secure the quill in the moose skin. You just push that black tip in. And actually, do, you, do you want to get film too? So she, these are indigo dyed quills and they may act badly. Then you fold the quill. And if you're doing a geometric design, it's folded at an angle. And we don't actually poke the quill into the, or poke the needle into the quill. It's just sewn up right beside it there. And then we run the needle and the thread in the crease. And then stitch it down right on the other side, so you can work, you can work just through the moose skin. And you can and see the thread just hides right in the crease. Turn it around, just kind of eyeball it, bend it again. Come up at the corner, right beside the quill. Run the thread and the needle. Under the quill, and go down right on the other side. And again, the stitch just hides right in the crease there. I'll do a couple more, and then I'll. It takes a little bit of practice to get all of the bends even. Some people will draw lines on here just so that they can keep their quills even. I've also seen it where they put a basting stitch so it can be pulled out along there just to guide the distance of your quills. I do that too. You lift up, pull the stitch up, this one goes in back a ways, underneath, that one comes down and hides that, this gets cut off at an angle, so you just leave enough there that it's not going to pull out, and then bend the new one right over the top of it, and just keep going. So I'm using four quills here, and um, Two of them are white, and then the other ones are brown and orange, and I have them all anchored back here, right next to each other. Um, they're not all stitched down after the first um, anchor stitch there. You can see where the orange one is anchored here, and then over here, and then it's weaved into the other quills. And then I go across and anchor the white one there, and then it's weaved in. Um, and your last stitch goes over like this. Yeah, I'm trying. Cut it off and, and then poke across it, poke and the end okay. in. Give my flat anchor on this yeah. side. That's where a tool like this comes in. I love that too. So you do, we'll do the stitch. You need another stitch up here. here. Okay, like this, because that's it's hard that's now. Hard now, but that's yeah. what this is for. Okay. Okay, so my quill is pointing down, my thread is between the quill and where I put the needle. And just to be sure, I make sure that thread is coming out between the needle and the quill that's pointing down. Okay. Flip the quill up with my thumb, but I'm not squishing it, yeah, I'm just holding it. it. And then this thread comes clockwise around the quill, but it doesn't tighten. It just hooks uh -huh. under my thumb. Okay. Then I come down here Oops. and push the needle through taut. I place the stitch where I want it, and then when I pull it, you see how what it did? Is this Nymo? Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, uh, I'm cutting, we're going to learn uh, quill wrap fringe today, so I'm making a little sampler, cutting fringe, and then we're going to show how to wrap porcupine quills on the fringe, which is a real common technique um, in the decorative arts up here.
Normally you draw on the back of the hide and you try to fit it in as close to the edge as you can and you need two of each of those. And then if you're going to do fringe, you would be. Wrapping fringe with quill can be done in different ways. A spot wrapping technique is when one quill is wrapped around the hide fringe and a gap of hide is left before wrapping another quill around the fringe. This technique creates a look similar to beadwork. Another technique is to use additional quills to overlap the wrap sections and create continuous wrapping. Quills of the same color or different colors can be used. To start the wrapped fringe technique, a quill is laid along the front of the hide fringe with the quill end facing down. While holding the quill end in place, the quill is bent around the back of the fringe and tightly wrapped around it several times, anchoring the quill end in place. The quill is wrapped tightly around the fringe a few more times, depending on the length of the quill. To continue the wrapping and completely cover the hide, another quill is added. The new quill is positioned horizontally across the fringe against the previous wrapped quill and under its remaining end. That remaining end is folded over the new quill. The end of the new quill is then wrapped across the top of the previous quill and held in place. The new quill is brought around the fringe in the opposite direction to the held end and tightly wrapped around several times, anchoring both of the quill ends in place. The new quill is wrapped tightly around the fringe a few more times. Once the remaining end of the previous quill is covered enough to be secured by the wrapped new quill, the rest can be trimmed off. No, it's okay. It's just I think it doesn't like me because I um, unplugged the computer for a minute. The new quill is tightly wrapped around the fringe again to cover the trimmed end. To finish a section of wrapped fringe, waxed cotton thread or sinew thread is used. A looped length of thread is positioned along the quill to be finished with the loop end facing down and under the quill. The quill is tightly wrapped around the fringe and thread a few times. And see, I'm holding, I'm actually holding tension on this with my other hand. Mm -hmm. The quill end is positioned into the thread loop. The thread is Back. gently pulled away from the wrap section. Ready? Just enough. If you pull it too much, you will cut the quill. Just enough to get it, get that fold under there. Mm -hmm. Now leave it. After the quill dries, the thread can be trimmed and removed. This is a type of wrapping technique where um, porcupine quills are wrapped on fringe, and it's really common in a lot of the old work. And what I'm showing right here is a type of wrapping where a single quill is wrapped and then a space is left between, um, between the sections of wrapping so that the leather is exposed underneath. And I have a name for this technique. I just call it spot wrapping. And sometimes in the literature, it's, if someone doesn't look at the material well enough, um, it's been mistaken for beadwork, beads, but if you look at it closely, it's actually porcupine quills wrapped in sections on a piece of fringe. And a lot of times it's used in combination, solid wrapping, which is up here, and then spot wrapping down as the fringe proceeds down towards the end. Tell I'm going to have to get my glasses. That's right, they're in my suitcase. I mean, in my briefcase. Now, I could have gone farther with that, but I want small sections. 